Welcome to Pet Obesity 101, an intro to one of the biggest preventable health problems that we face in our pets. In today's video, I'll be chatting about why preventing obesity is so important, some factors that can put your pet at increased risk, and some ways that you can tell if your pet is over their ideal body weight. But first of all, what is pet obesity? Pet obesity or your pet being overweight simply means that your pet has more body fat than what's healthy for their size. This can have a negative impact on their health and quality of life. It's a problem that can be much more common than you think. In a 2021 study that was performed by the Royal Veterinary College, it was found that one in 14 dogs was recorded as overweight by their veterinarian. And I think you'll find that this is an underestimate of what we see. I would say, relatively speaking, for dogs that I see in clinical practice, one to two of every three dogs that I see is over their ideal body condition. In the US in 2022, a study done by the Association of Pet Obesity Prevention showed that an estimate of 59% of dogs and 61% of cats were recorded as overweight or obese. So why is this such a big concern? Just like in humans, our pets being overweight or obese will put them at increased risk of developing certain health problems. This can include things like spinal conditions and joint problems, such as arthritis, diabetes, respiratory distress, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and even cancer. Some studies have even shown that keeping our pets in an ideal body condition can increase their lifespan. This is why veterinarians think it is so important for you to keep your pet at a healthy body condition because we wanna be able to spend as much time with them as we can. Putting on a little bit of extra weight is something that any pet can fall prey to. I know in our house, we've had periods of time where our pets have been over their ideal body condition, but there are some factors that can put your pet at an increased risk of gaining weight. The first one is age. We know that as a pet increases in age, it becomes more likely for them to gain extra weight and be over their ideal body condition. The next is pet breed. We know that genetics plays a role in being prone to gaining and keeping weight on. So certain breeds are gonna be at an increased risk of weight gain. This includes our retrievers, our Labradors and our Goldens, but also breeds like pugs and beagles. Another factor that can make a significant impact on weight gain is neutering, which a lot of pet parents aren't aware of. Neutering, spaying, or castrating your pet does put them at an increased risk of weight gain. This is because we're impacting the hormones and that will affect their appetite and their weight gain. Now, don't get me wrong, neutering is a very safe procedure that is often recommended by veterinarians for many reasons. However, we do need to educate owners that there is going to be an increased risk of weight gain after the procedure. Another factor when it comes to gaining weight is lifestyle. What you feed, how much you feed, and what sorts of activity your dog partakes in is going to have a massive impact on potential weight gain. This is why it's really important for pet owners to do their research before bringing home certain breeds. For example, you should only be bringing home a high energy breed like a working collie or a German short haired pointer if you know that you have the appropriate time and space to exercise these dogs. One thing that's really important to remember is what classifies your pet as being overweight or obese is going to be different for every individual dog or cat. This is gonna vary on breed and species among other factors. So here's a few tools that we can use to talk about weight. The first is body weight. Now, a number on the scale is not always the most important thing, but it is a tool that we can utilize to help us measure periods of time, right? Getting your pet used to stepping on a scale is a very good way for us to keep track of things over time. It shouldn't be the only tool that we use, but it's an important place to start. Another tool that we can use when we're assessing a pet's body weight is called a body condition score or BCS. We have to remember that BCS is going to be subjective. So different people might see slightly different things, but it's a nice tool that we can use to look at a pet and assess how we feel about their body condition based on places that we're looking and places that we're feeling. Typically with a body condition score, it is going to be given on a scale of one to nine, with five being ideal. Now, one would be talking about the fact that your pet is severely underweight, and nine would be suggestive that your pet is flirting with obesity. So we like to keep dogs right in the middle with a five out of nine as ideal. There's a few places that we can look and a few places that we can feel when we're talking about body condition scoring a pet. So the first two places that I'm going to feel are going to be over the rib cage and over the tail base. You should be able to easily feel your dog's ribs and tail base without much pressure. So there should be a thin, thin layer of fat over those, but you shouldn't have to push very hard to feel the bone. Two places that you can look at your dog is from the top and from the side. When we look down at our pets from standing over them, they should have a waist. They should have a little bit of an indent that we can see. Similarly, when we're looking at our dogs from the side, there should be a little bit of an abdominal tuck, and we should be able to look at that and see that gradual change. 
again, it's important to remember that body condition scoring is going to be very subjective. So while it is a helpful tool, it should not be the only tool that we use to assess whether a pet is over or underweight. There are other ways and other factors that we can use to assess a pet's body weight or body condition when it comes to their health. Now, these do become more advanced, so they may be used less commonly, but again, more helpful tools for us. The first would be something like body fat percentage, which sometimes we can estimate in conjunction with body condition score, but we can also use things like measurements of your pet, such as places like their skull or their arm length to determine what a healthy weight would be. And last but not least is going to be the gold standard, which is similar to human medicine, like a DEXA scan. You won't find a DEXA scan is done ideally in veterinary medicine because of the cost and the time. However, like I said, it's nice to have all of these options when we're assessing the body condition of a pet. I always recommend taking the advice of a veterinarian or a certified veterinary nutritionist when we talk about choosing the food and the amount of food that is right for your pet, especially when we're talking about weight loss. If you want more information about this, check out some of our other videos about obesity to get more detail about choosing the right food and what sorts of things we look for. When it comes to pet obesity, 100% prevention is going to be the best form of treatment. So I really encourage owners when they are first bringing home a pet to think about this early on and have a set plan for food and exercise.